Hi guys, this is Hero. How's everyone doing today? Add by the game show. Add sub case ho. So today I'm going over why you should never label your failed relationships as karmic. Okay, these karmic relationships. This is like huge buzzword, like in this uh, new age spiritual, like internet space. I guess you can say. Okay, this is a horrendous practice that for some reason is glorified. Uh, especially with Western people, okay? Anybody who glorifies this or validates this in any way, you should take their advice or what they say with a huge grain of salt. And I'll explain why throughout this video, okay? By labeling your failed relationships as karmic, you are basically removing any sort of self accountability or responsibility for your awareness and actions. You are not facing your fear of failure and you are furthering the risk of you indulging into lust. Okay. I'll expand upon all these points one by one. Okay. Um, yeah. So I will start with the first one. Okay. First of all, these karmic relationships, right? There is usually a trend here with any relationship that's karmic. That is physical attachment, emotional attachment, and or mental attachment, okay? Here's the thing though, you can argue that your relationship is karmic. And I will say it probably is. But I will say there are a lot of things in this life that's karmic, right? This room that I'm sitting in is karmic. This house that I'm in is karmic. This neighborhood is karmic. My car outside is karmic. My family members are karmic. My job is karmic. My grocery store is karmic, right? I, I'm not. I, I, I'm not, you know, emphasizing the karmicness of every little thing in my life, right? But why? Why do I do this with certain relationships, right? Certain relationships that I might have been very, very desperately hooked on either physically, emotionally, or mentally. And most of them probably just left extremely suddenly from my life. Okay. Now that is what I'm going to explore here. Okay. So like I said, most common rela uh, karmic relationships have a very common trend. There's one of these three attachments, right? So by calling your relationships karmic, you are removing responsibility for not having been aware of these attachments, which ended up, you know, bruising your ego quite severely when uh, usually this person left or something or it didn't work out for whatever reason. OK, also, you are removing responsibility for the decisions you made. Right. No, no one unless someone like held a gun to your head and you know, force you to, you know, unconsensually do things with this person. Okay. Uh, but for that's a completely different story. But unless that happened, most of the time, there were decisions that you voluntarily or with your own free will made in order to, you know, that, that led up to you meeting this person, you know, you interacting with this person, and then you moving forward with this person. Okay. So these could have been decisions such as like, uh, putting yourself in environment or situations in order to meet certain types of people choosing a specific person and the way you conduct yourself after you meet that specific person, right? These are decisions that by you just labeling your failed relationships, especially the ones that you really liked as karmic, you're completely removing the accountability for the decision making that you made or whoever, you know, is getting into these karmic relationships made, right? Yes, it was karmic, right? I, I understand spirituality is a big part of your life and stuff like that. But just because spirituality is a part of your life and relationships are karmic, you should not just say, oh, it was a karmic relationship to avoid any sort of uh, responsibility for, um, you know, not being aware of certain things or have made, having made wrong decisions or things like that, right? That That is not what we want to do here, right? I don't care if 99% of 
the spiritual gurus online are justifying and glorifying karmic relationships, possibly from their own very recent personal experience or experiences, right? And I'm not saying everybody has to be perfect. I'm not perfect. I have my fair share of my past. I'll get. I'll just say that. But so I'm not trying to act like I'm all perfect on here. But I'm also not trying to act like you know. I'm not trying to just sprinkle you know sprinkles on a pile of shit and pretend like it's not just a bunch of shit, right? That's the point I'm trying to make. So don't fall for this trap for that first reason, okay? Another reason is the fear of... Actually, I'll, I'll discuss that next. Is lust, okay? Most likely, if you had a karmic relationship, like I said, there was an attachment... Of, uh, like a physical, mental, or emotional, and usually it was quite, quite strong, okay? For you to be all hooked on it still and enter keep entertaining it mentally and tell yourself that it was karmic and things like that. Most likely, there was a severe amount of lust involved, okay? Because lust is formed by one of these three attachments, right? That's all lust is really, okay? Now, as harm or as much as it hurts when that opportunity of lust is taken away from you in the moment it feels quite quite pleasurable okay now once you've experienced lust i don't think you would mind experiencing it again right a very high degree of lust okay so by you labeling your failed relationships as karmic what you are doing is, yes, you're not taking responsibility for all the awareness and decisions that's, that, that I already discussed, but you are also, subconsciously, you might not be aware of this, which that's a whole different story, whether you're aware of it or not, right? I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not trying to break down that argument. That could take all day. But what you are doing is subconsciously, you are staying attached to that lust, okay? Because by not trying to alter anything, right? But just, hey, this was karmic, right? So what you're doing is say, hey, everything's all good. It was okay, right? Meaning, if, if that happens again, kind of, I'm fine right? I'm not exactly explaining it the right way, but I think you guys get what I'm saying. Th that that happened, and you know what? I I'm okay if it happens again, because like I said, the, the yeah, I didn't like the result at the end, but the lust was, uh, is, is, is quite satisfying in the moment, okay? Next is fear of failure, okay? The fear of failure comes into this. So if we take in the last thing, I'll probably expand on it throughout the video. I just need to get my, let me just get some thoughts together here. So I said how your awareness and decisions, right? You need to take self responsibility for them. If you do take self-responsibility for them, and you mess up again in the next one, right? Your mind always has a fear of failure, right? Like, oh, what happens if I try to expand my awareness? I try to do the right thing. I try to make the best decisions, and it still just blows up in my face, right? So rather than dealing with that feel of failure and, you know, your ego getting smashed, right? Who wants that? Hey, it was a karmic relationship, right? That way, if it happens again, continuously, guys, it's a karmic relationship, right? It wasn't my fault. And, and, and I get it, right? You're not in control, right? God is or the supreme consciousness or whatever you want to call it, right? Some, something, some higher power is in control, okay? I'm not arguing that. What I am saying, though, is the higher power or whatever, it's not just stupidly doing stuff, right? 
it's doing things for you, right? And you need to indirectly take responsibility for what happens. So if you're too attached to, let's just say, a good looking partner, and then God, like, let's just say, takes that person away, right? Uh, and, and this and this was done to like boost your actual self-confidence, right? Because you were too reliant on this person for your false sense of self-confidence. Uh, so you need to take into retrospect, hey, look, yes, God was in control. This person left because this is what God wanted or whatever. But hey, they only did this because I was never a confident person. I was never... You know, I, I had a, a lack in me of something that I, I needed to fix, right? So we need to explore that, right? Now, transitioning back to the lust point that I said I would circle back on. Okay. Lust, like I said, physical, emotional, and mental attachment, right? In astrology, the first in the seventh house, right? They supplement each other. They support each other. They complement each other. They aspect each other, right? There's a lot of connection. Now, why does this happen? Because your relationship other with others directly affects the relationship with you and vice versa, okay? Now, where am I going with this? If someone is using failed relationships and labeling them as karmic, right? And like I said, you have a goal, you, you have a goal of marriage, right? You are actually not by, uh, man, this is a little tricky to get out, but By by you labeling that as karmic means that you are giving emphasis on those superficial attachments, right? Which means if you are valuing in other people those superficial attachments, you are actually valuing those same things about you the superficial and not actually who you are, which will lower your actual self-confidence and increase your own insecurities, which will turn into like this huge snowball effect and continue the cycle of lust more and more, okay? Hopefully that made sense. If it didn't, I mean, you can ask me a question or comment either in the comment section or through my email, which is in my bio, okay? Um, but another thing, and this might not be the best thing you want to hear, but it's okay. Anybody who, and I mean anybody, who I don't care if they're your best friend, I don't care if they're your online guru, I don't care who it is. If they are glorifying or validating your failed relationships as karmic without having you taking any deep inner work about your own lack of awareness or your own decision making that could have been improved or anything like that, I would take a strong look and see Uh, how, how spiritually elevated can this person really be, right? For the reasons that I just said, right? I mean, you're just going to continue down this cycle, right? Like, that's like that's not resourceful at all. I mean, yeah, everybody does it these days, I feel like, because, uh, I mean, everybody's just, like, dating around and stuff like that. But that doesn't mean it's a good thing, right? Just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean that it's good. Right. Just because. Um, yeah, you have to understand 
marriage and things like that it's 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 based off of like severe amount of like discipline and learning and ups and downs and things like that right like let's just take our like example of uh, ram bhagwan right or like, it's one of like uh incarnations of lord vishnu his wife you know he lost his wife sita right temporarily was he just like oh ah, man uh i guess that was a karmic relationship you know that back to the streets i go right no obviously not he fought he fought for her and he continued right my point is try to adopt that mindset versus whatever dating mindset you uh learn from social media or the media or things like that okay um yeah you have to think right what look at people who currently have like successful marriages like with like multiple kids more than like 20 or 20 years old right because that means they already finished it right look at people who already made it to the finish line and see what they did were you doing what they did right and i know they might be older and stuff that like barely matters okay uh because it j just because everybody now is doing something that doesn't work doesn't mean that it doesn't work okay or or that has less chance of working out doesn't mean that it, it doesn't remove the fact of the situation just because everybody's doing it right um so yeah just keep that in mind at the end of the day you're going to be responsible for your own relationship or marital success okay so just keep that in mind if you want to you know just hope that everything just works out you can um and you can just chalk it up to karma but i would recommend you not doing that and i would recommend you focus on your awareness and your decisions and things like that and i made other videos on why on like how to do this right i have like so many videos on that but yeah, that's this, man. So if you have any questions or comments, you can let me know via the comment section or my email. And until next time, I'll talk to everyone later. Thank you all very, very much for watching.